Good morning. Welcome. It's nice to see you again. I hope today is going to be a good day for you, a day of blessing. Whatever your age, let me say. I've been thinking about ageism, thinking about how God, how many promises the Lord has given and how many people in the scriptures were used by God when they were older. And I woke up this morning trying to think just roughly how old John was when he wrote the Revelation, um, the book of Revelation, when he wrote down what God had given to him. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite difficult to calculate it, but we think it was written um, when he was in exile on Patmos. Um, and this was really round about 95 to 100 AD. And uh, Jesus began his ministry about 29, 30 AD. So it's a, it's a good 65 years um, after the death of Jesus. Well, 60 years after, after the death of Jesus and after the call of the disciples. So it's likely that John would have been in his late 80s or 90s, maybe even a bit older, depending on how old he was. Of course, nowhere in the Gospels does it tell us the relative ages of the disciples. That's not... Not, not, not recorded anywhere. Um, so he was really quite elderly when he wrote the book of the Revelation. Um, I was thinking about that and then I was thinking about all the youngsters in the Bible. You know, uh, do not despise. Uh, when, 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 when Paul was writing to Timothy, who, was, who, was, who comes, appears, suddenly appears in um, the story in Acts, um, and uh, Paul writes him two letters and calls him his son in the faith. Um, so he was considerably younger than Paul. And in 1 Timothy, uh, chapter, tw uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 12, um, he says, let no one despise your youth. And he said in the verse before, command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. And in chapter 5, the beginning of chapter 5, he tells him how to manage relationships with people of different ages. Timothy was very young when he came to faith and when he was leading churches and serving with Paul and ministering to people. Um, and I was thinking about other people who were very young. There's Jeremiah. You read the first chapter of Jeremiah, you'll see that the thing that worried him was that he was young. He was very young when God called him to be a prophet. And there's Samuel. Think of Samuel, whose mother dedicated him to the Lord um, when he was born. She had pleaded with God. This is at the beginning of 1 Samuel. She had pleaded with God for a child. She was childless and her um, husband's other second wife or first wife, other wife anyway, had children and she had none. And she pleaded with God for a son and he gave him, he gave her Samuel and she gave Samuel back to him. And Samuel was able to hear the voice of the Lord at a very young age. And he was given a very difficult message to give to his uh, mentor. Um, uh, oh, gosh, Eli. Eli was his name. Gosh, it went from my mind suddenly. Um, and there are a lot of people who were picked out when they were young. Think of um, Joseph. He started out life as the youngest in his family until his baby brother was born. Um, and uh, he had those dreams when he was very young. And he was so young when he had them that he was foolish enough to share them and got into trouble with his brothers for sharing them. Um, and he was very young when all that happened. David was a very young boy. He was so young and insignificant compared to his brothers that his father didn't even uh, get him home from the fields where he was looking after the sheep when um, Samuel came looking for the one God wanted him to anoint to be the next king over Israel. And David learned to be um, a singer for God and a worshipper of God when he was very young out in the fields just looking after the sheep for his father. So there's a lot in the scriptures about the young. And in Proverbs, it tells us that we should train up a child 
in the way he should go. And, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. There are some, there's a whole school of thought that says that we should teach children about every faith and let them make up their mind in the end. Um, and the scripture doesn't actually uphold that. Um, it doesn't, it, nowhere is there instruction that we should know all about, that, that the Israelites should know more about the gods of the people amongst whom they lived so that they could discern whether following God was right or not. Nowhere does that appear. And in, indeed in Deuteronomy, they're told how to remember the great events in their life. And that was to have a child at the table say, what happened when, when, you, went, when you left Egypt? What happened? So that the story could be recited again to the children. And it's the responsibility of us adults to teach our children and grandchildren the truths about Jesus and the truths about salvation. It's interesting if you, when you're ever in a, a study group uh, with people you don't know, one of the first things possibly you do is talk about how you came to faith. And um, many people, uh, it, it's like everything else. It's, it's like, well, it's, it's like the hairstyle we have. If you've got straight hair, you want curly hair. If you've got curly hair, you want straight hair. If you've got blonde hair, you want dark hair. You know, we always want what we haven't got. And that's what it seems like when we think about our childhood. You know, if you're brought up as I was in a family that didn't go to church and had no active faith, <coughs> you wish you'd had Christian parents. If you grow up in a family where the, fam where the parents are Christians and take you to church, you wish you'd had the experience of knowing what it was like to live without having faith around you all your life. But this, the Bible doesn't look at it like that. The Bible says we should teach our children and our grandchildren the right way. And we shouldn't actually rely on church and Sunday school to teach our children the stories of the Bible. We should be teaching them ourselves. And a child is really almost never too young to come to faith in Jesus. I've had that experience myself. It's been lovely. I had two daughters. I have two daughters. And the first one came to faith at the age of six, and the second one um, came to, eight, to faith at the age of four. And they're still following the Lord now. And it's wonderful. They're in their 40s now, both of my girls. And it's a wonderful thing to share your faith with your children and to see your children walking in faith as you are. Um, so, young and old, we all have a reason to serve the Lord. And there's no difference. We should never look at our age to think that it disqualifies us from what God is calling us to do. We should not despise children when they come and, and speak words of faith to us. And uh, children should not despise old people because of their age. Um, uh, God doesn't see us like that. Oh, maybe tomorrow I'll share, you with, share with you why I think we're all going to be round about the same age in heaven, in eternity. That's something to think about. That's for tomorrow. For, de for today, don't look at someone and regard them well or not, depending upon their age. Let's not be ageist in our faith and in our walk with God. God bless you, whatever age you are. Because if you're young, you'll get old. And if you're old, once upon a time, you were young. And let us honour each other in the Lord. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.